Thank you, David. Uh, nice to be talking to you again. It's great to be back. We, we, we're going to talk about prioritizing risks. And most people think probability and impact, and you have some sort of prioritization matrix based on those two factors. But there are others. And I'm just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about what else we should or could consider in terms of prioritizing risks. Yes, we talk about um, risk being uncertainty that matters. And so the key question when you ask how big a risk is or how important it is, is, well, how uncertain is it and how much does it matter? And the uncertainty dimension, we might use the word probability or frequency or likelihood or chance. In projects, we tend to use probability. And on the how much does it matter, we might talk about impact or effect or consequence or result. Uh, and again, we tend to use the word probability and impact, which gives us a probability impact matrix. A two dimensions, a two dimensional matrix. And we used to call it a probability impact grid, but then the acronym wasn't quite as friendly as a, as a probability impact matrix. So, so that's the, the origin of the idea, uncertainty that matters, probability and impact, that's enough to decide how big the risk is and how much it matters. But there are other important factors to consider when you're prioritizing a risk and asking the question, how important is it? Um, if you look in the new PIMBOT guide, which was issued in September 2017, and I was responsible for the update of the risk chapter, we've put into there, or PMI has put into there, a new section in the qualitative risk assessment uh, uh, process called Other Risk Parameters uh, to be used for prioritization. And there are nine of them. And you think, gosh, I thought probability and impact was, was hard enough. We've got another nine things to think about. Um, fortunately, they're grouped into three groups of three. Um, so three of them, you might well have heard of at least some of these. Each of these are important characteristics of the risk which affect how important it is for us to think about. So the first three are in the group of time-related characteristics. So one of them is proximity. So with proximity, and this might be one you've heard of, the proximity, proximus means close. So proximity means how soon might the risk arrive. And clearly, if you've got a risk that could happen tomorrow, it might be more important than a risk that could happen six months or a year away. So the closeness of the risk in time affects how, impo how important it is. Um, another uh, time-related characteristic is urgency. So how quickly do I have to act? Supposing I have a risk that is six months away uh, and I have to act this week in order to influence it. Um, or I have another risk which is six months away and I have three or four months before I have to do anything that would affect the risk. Then clearly the risk where I have to act now is more important to know about. We prioritise the response uh, than one where I could wait and I've got plenty of time to think about it. So urgency is a time-related characteristic that's different from proximity. So we might talk about an impact window for proximity, when might it happen, and an action window, when do I have to do something? And we can plot those different windows in time and work out which one is closest and when we have to do something about it. Um, and then the, the other time-related factor is dormancy. Now, dormancy is an interesting idea. The idea is if the, the risk sometimes happens, but we don't see it until later. So sometimes you have a risk that occurs, supposing you, you might recruit an incompetent member of staff and you recruit the person and they look great. And then they go off and they do their training and they, you give them some tasks to do. And six months later, they hand in their work and it's a load of garbage. And they've got some piece of code that they developed and it doesn't integrate and it's full of bugs. You didn't know that. The, the risk was recruiting an incompetent person, but the effect didn't become a, a, um, a visible until later. So it was a dormant risk. Other risks, uh, if they happen, you see it straight away. So clearly that's something which we need to think about in terms of the potential impact of the risk. So those are the first three parameters or factors to consider and they were all time related. Mm. Uh, what's the next group of, of factors to consider? Well, the next three will be to do with how we manage the risks. So first of all, we've got the question of manageability. How easy is it to do something about? And manageability, um, you know, you might have a big risk that's going to happen tomorrow, but it's really easy to fix. All we have to do is take out an insurance policy, or we have to inform somebody that this might happen, or we, or we change our process a little bit. 
So if it's easily manageable, it's low priority. If it's hard to manage, it might be a higher priority for us to look at and consider and think about. Then you've got the question of controllability. So if the risk actually happens and we're dealing with the impact, then how easy is it to make that impact larger or smaller? So the manageability is to do with affecting the, the, uh, the um, uh, uh, occurrence of the risk. The controllability is to do with managing the impact of the risk. Okay? And then the third type of management parameter to think about is how easy is it to see the risk, detectability. Some risks kind of creep up on you under the radar and we're not, they're very hard to see until they arrive. And others, they, they come at you with you know, fanfare and say, here I come, I'm going to affect you. Uh, easily detectable risks, um, they don't need so much prioritisation. The ones that are hard to detect, then we might need to spend some time looking for early warning signals, trigger factors. Uh, maybe we can just do some, some uh, horizon scanning or environmental scanning to spot them coming. So in terms of manageability, in terms of the uh, response, we've got manageability, how easy is it to affect the occurrence of the risk, controllability, how easy is it to affect the impact of the risk, and detectability, how easy is it to see coming. What about the third group of factors that could be considered in prioritising risks? Yes, these, these affect the way that the risk, uh, the impact that the risk has if it occurs. So clearly risks affect objectives and uh, we should prioritise the risk on the potential impact. But there are other ways in, in which risks might have an impact which we need to think about. One is the impact that a risk might have on other risks. So we call that connectivity. So a risk might just happen, and if it happens, it's completely isolated and independent, and it doesn't matter to anything else. But sometimes we have risks that if they occur, they affect the occurrence of other risks. They either make them more likely or less likely. They might make them uh, have a bigger impact or a smaller impact. You can have a risk which actually sets off a cascade of other risks. And clearly that risk is then more important than risks that just happen in isolation. So the connectivity of a risk is clearly important. Secondly, you've got the idea of affecting not just the project objectives, but the wider objectives of the organisation, the strategic objectives, or the fit that our, organization, that our project might have with the strategic goals of the organisation. So if a risk has a strategic impact as well as a project impact, then clearly it's more important. And then the last, the ninth or, or the third of this group of three, um, is, a, is a factor called propinquity. Now, propinquity is an interesting word. Um, a lot of people haven't heard of it. Um, it comes from a Latin word which means close, which is a bit like proximity. Proximity means close in time or close in time or space. Propinquity means close to me. It means something that matters, something that, that I care about. So high propinquity uh, is something which has a, a, an impact on a key stakeholder. It really matters to them and it's more important to them than something which is ir irrelevant or insignificant. And some risks, although they have you know, an average, sort of a, an acceptable level of probability and impact on objectives, they're going to be a real red flag or maybe even a black flag for someone who matters. And they're going to say, well, I know it's only just one of the risks but to you, but to me, this is key. And if that happens, I'm cancelling the project or I'm withdrawing my support. So propinquity is about how close it is to a person who matters. And again, it's a type of impact which is different from the impact on objectives. So we've got this list of nine additional parameters in addition to probability and impact. We've got time-related parameters. We've got parameters relating to how we respond and parameters relating to the impact of the risk outside of the project objectives. And clearly, uh, risks are quite complex things when you think about it in these terms. The, I guess the next question is, does every project need to worry about all of these nine things in addition to probability and impact for every risk? Well, I think my, yeah, my question was from a practical point of view, David. Exactly. We've now got you know, 11 potential dimensions of a risk. So, so how do you apply this in a practical sense? Yes, it's a challenge, isn't it? Um, this is where the kind of thought leadership uh, theory butts up against the practical application. And, and clearly you can see, you know, this all makes sense. You can understand that each of these additional dimensions are important, but there's no way that you can prioritise risks on 11 factors. You know, it's bad enough trying to do it with two, just probability and impact. 
So what we have to do is pick the ones that are most important in our setting. So if we have, for example, a time-constrained project, and you know, all of your milestones are close together and there's no float in your program and, and the end date is absolutely fixed, then maybe we need to be thinking about proximity and urgency um, and, the, and the time related and dormancy, the time related risks. If we have um, uh, projects which are of strategic importance with key stakeholder relationships, then maybe we should be thinking about strategic fit and about propinquity. So you pick the factors which are relevant to your project. It is also important to say that um, you can't use a probability impact matrix for these other factors because it only measures two dimensions. So we have to think about other visualization techniques, maybe using a bubble, bubble diagram, bubble chart, which will give you three, or using some kind of um, uh, multi-factor analysis. Um, you know, we have to think carefully about visualization using dials on a dashboard, for example. Um, so it, is, it does re, uh, introduce another layer of complication, and I would say only use these things where it's necessary. Most projects can get away with probably probability and impact, proximity and, and urgency, I would think. But some of the other projects, we need to think about these factors as well. Thank you very much, David. It's a pleasure.